live from Seattle, Washington. It's the Cube on the ground, covering KubeCon 2016. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation and Red Hat. Here's your host, John Furrier. Okay, we are here in Seattle for a special on the ground with the Cube. I'm John Furrier, next guest Matthew Lodge, CEO of WeaveWorks. Great to see you. Thanks, John. Welcome Great back. to be here again. So, what's going on? What's your take on uh, first of all the button you wear there? It says CNCF, which I'm, you know, says vote. Well, today's election day. <laughs> yes. Um, tight race. Cloud native. <laughs> Cloud native computing foundation. I Cloud. think you should vote for that. <laughs> <laughs> I am voting with my right. feet here. So we're here. So no, but this is important. This is a new foundation. It's not KubeCon. It's Kube right. Kubernetes. Yeah. Is part of the cloud native. That's right, cloud native con, yeah. Yeah, cloud native con. So, bigger picture, your take on this, what does it mean for people? To, uh, what does this mean? Is it, they fall part of the same thing? What's, what's your take on it? Well, when Google first looked at different foundations, they wanted Kubernetes to be a true community and not just a Google thing, right? Because there's, there's a Wikipedia page somewhere that's got a list of all of the canceled Google projects, right? And people are going to ask, is, is Kubernetes just going to be one of those other projects that just shows up on that list at some point? And so they wanted to establish a real community around that. And essentially what they saw when they looked at you know, the various different foundations, because we're not short on open source foundations, I think yeah, you might have noticed. Yeah, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting <laughs> one. That's right. You know, but some are more effective than others, right? Yes. And we just had uh, the um, Apache Foundation, former yep. uh, president Ron right. from Microsoft. They're very successful. That's right. So there's, there's a formula. Yes. What's your take on that formula? But I think you know what's you know different about cloud native computing is it's you know it's uh, it's a way of delivering that kind of um, agility that people were looking for and, and essentially doing computing in a new way, right? And it's, a, it's more of an organizational shift down to you know, smaller teams developing microservices. And so, you know, Cloud Native Computing Foundation was a way to build a community around that idea, which is bigger than just Kubernetes itself. Yeah, um, give it some range too, right? Again, right. make it part of a bigger Yes. Picture. What's the critical success factors in your mind for this this new organization? Well, I think there's really the big one is obviously end user adoption of the different projects, right? If we are if we are adopting and enabling the um, incubating the right projects at the CNCF, we should see that reflected in adoption. And I think you know Kubernetes, um, you know, some great statistics on you know the number of jobs mentioning Kubernetes skill sets has you know spiked, right? And is now much higher, for example, than people talking about Cloud Foundry. Is one of the yeah, I think the line is straight up. By the way, right on, on the slope is pretty pretty good. Right on, so, on uh, Kubernetes jobs. I think that's a really great, um, really great indicator of this. So the end user adoption is particularly important, and I'm I'm very pleased as a, being on the board of the CNCF is that we have new uh, levels for people to be able to contribute and end users to join, and basically making the whole process easier. We've got some great end users currently in yeah. CNCF, so folks like you know Samsung, but also Goldman Sachs and others. Um, so, being able to build on that and add some more, I think, is yeah, really it's, important. it's fun. You know, with the cube, has been seven years, and this is our seventh season doing the cube, right? And it's been so much fun, and I've learned a lot and, and met a lot of great people. But you've seen certain patterns and and the innovation of the maturity. Mm -hmm. If people get dogmatic on certain things, they get stuck in the mud. Yep. Things were built a few years earlier. The pace of new shipping new code is at, at an all time high. Yes. So, dogma kills communities, right? That's right. So, so, yeah. you know platform as a service might have been a certain approach, maybe look good on paper, mm -hmm. try to get some traction, but that dog isn't hunting certain ways, and smart people are shifting. Yes. And Kubernetes is, to me, and I want to get your take on this, seems to be, with containers, a nice way to take some of the heavy weights off some of these other mm -hmm. parts of the stack. Yes. Do you agree, and is that something yeah. that people are talking about? Yeah, I mean, it, once you start out with containers, you eventually realize that, well, you need an automated way to manage this and you know, schedule all these different containers and deal with your services. So Kubernetes uh, you know, fills an important gap there, and it's also based on a lot of hard-won lessons uh, yeah. out of Google and Borg. Yeah. So that all, that's all the better for that. I think also some of the newer projects are also very interesting. So things like FluentD, which we announced today, that's the um, logging. Yeah, the logging, which yeah. is sort of you know solves the many-to-many -many logging problem, which is you know until you start with the building an application like this where you've got lots of different components, they all log in slightly different ways. You need to get them to all these different destinations, and suddenly you you know you realize that that's a problem you have with a cloud-native application you didn't necessarily have before. So being able to have these things and when we first you know it was a bit bumpy in the first couple of board meetings for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. But we really wanted on to, the business side or technical selection side. Of no, projects? it's more on the it's more on the business side, but also what kind of foundation did we want to be, 
And we decided that we wanted more to be on the sort of rough consensus and running code kind of mantra from the ITF in the early days. ITF, yep. yeah. Yeah, and not, not be, yeah, ITF, not picking, not picking winners, right? So there isn't one stack. It's more, ITF was, um, ITF was an architectural thing too, yes. right? They were very much on architecture. But uh, you know, when you looked at protocols, the early protocols of the internet, you know, things like TCP and SMTP, um, if you didn't have a running implementation, you couldn't propose that. It wasn't like a standards body where you know you're poring over specifications yeah. on paper. Yeah, that's absolutely yeah proof in the pudding. Yeah, more than ever now with cloud. Yes, absolutely. What's interesting, I want to get your thoughts on is is that if you look at all the, the markets, um, as Dave Vellante would say, the TAM or the total addressable market, right. are still there. Big data and what Hadoop was trying to do is a great example. Um, having some, some talk earlier in the hallways about you know what people tried to do with Hadoop was mm -hmm. a, you know had the right eye in the right market but technology shifts. So there's a lot of different markets out there that are disruptable. Yes. That are waiting to be disrupted. So it seems like containers and, and Kubernetes gives a more power to the development speed. Yes. With all the benefits of that history of open source. Yes. Your thoughts on that idea? Yeah, I was in New York last week and we were talking to a variety of you know, folks from different financial services firms, sat down with the CIO, and you know what he wants to do is uh, he wants to bring his organization to a new level of productivity. He needs them to go faster. And for the bank, it is about being able to move faster and deliver new capabilities, more complex capabilities, sooner than their competitors can. And they only really, the way that they can see about doing that is through cloud native architecture. But what goes along with that is also bringing the organization along. And so tooling like this is a way, not, it's not just a way to get this, these things done, but it's a way to enable the organization. Yeah. It gives them a model to work against. I feel like it's got a good, I think, I feel good about this uh, direction, I really do. Uh, I know we get spent all this time on what's going on with the foundation. Yeah. What's going on with Weave? And we got a minute left um, on the <laughs> schedule. We're going to work on overtime. The lights are on. We're going to get kicked out. We're going to go till the end. That's what the Cube does. Whatever it takes to get the story. All right. What's going on? What's <laughs> going on with uh, with Weave? Tell us what's going on with the company. Status, just sure. what's happening. So one of the things that we're doing right now, one, one of these areas that's being disrupted that you talked about is monitoring. Right, so Prometheus came into the Cloud Native Computing Foundation what, about a month ago. And so Weaveworks has developed essentially a scale out version of Prometheus. Um, so you can, you can take this and scale it out and that becomes the core of a new offering uh, that's part of going to be a part of our Weave Cloud service. It's currently in beta, um, go GA before the end of the year. But we needed to pick a time series database monitoring and as you know, uh, lots of competition in that market, lots of different things we could have chosen. Went with Prometheus because it really is designed for this highly dynamic cloud native environment, right? And it's it's much easier for us to take that and turn it into a tool that is really tuned up for the needs of cloud native applications. Yeah, and I think the disruption, I was talking to Dave Vellante on the phone this morning about some other market facing stuff that we were riffing on, but the, the, the dynamics are different on the competitive strategy. How you yeah. enter a market now is completely different than the playbook, well, even five to 10 years ago, five years back, I mean, maybe 10 yes. years, it's certainly 10 years back. The playbook was simple. You got to get the beachhead secure it now, Right. With the value creation tooling and the acceleration mm -hmm. of software, you can really change the game on existing. You don't need a big bloated software. Lightweight yeah. wins. Yes, I think also open source wins. Yeah, open source is one. Yeah, I it's mean it's winning. <laughs> it's one and it's continues winning. to win. Well, you know, we, there's no way we could have done what yeah. we we have done with this. We made this scale out service without it being open source. We we're able to take something that existed and build on it, yeah. and essentially build a new iteration of that. Um, and you can go see this on GitHub. It's all it's all open source called Cortex, uh, you know, based on Prometheus. GitHub, on, uh, we'll check it out on GitHub. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you mentioned open source. I mean, real quick, my take, I'd love to get your thoughts on it, is that, you know, open source, look at Red Hat, for example, as, as an example, that's my generation, grew up with the Red Hat, <laughs> all the open source Gen 1. It's now all tier one, so open source has hit that tier one yeah. software delivery paradigm. Right. I think what cloud does takes it to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. So if it's already tier one, then it has to become tier one plus, which means got to get full scale and bigger growth. So my take is that, you know, it's got to go, how do, what does it go from tier one? Is okay, it got premier status. Now it has to come from the growth. So I think the action is going to be much higher. I'd love to get your thoughts on dynamics of how you see open source going even further. Well, I think, you know, open source is now is, is what customers expect. You know, even these, these big banks, they all expect that everything's going to be in open source, even though they might want to, you know, buy a commercial product or buy a commercial version. It, 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 that's, that's the foundation, that is what they want to have, they don't want to be locked in. And, and especially now with cloud, they don't want to be locked into a particular cloud provider. They're very aware of how, where they ended up with the previous generation of technology and what the dependencies were. 
Uh, and so another reason for them to go after cloud native is yeah. to give themselves more options. I think cloud native is going to be big. I think the open source population, I think it's going to explode. I think there's going to be a new class of developer yeah. uh, we haven't even seen yet. It's just with IOT and just all these new things happening, it just, it just feels like a population explosion in terms of developer yes. count. A absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, this year may be the year that CMOs have a bigger spend in software development than, than maybe IT departments do. Yeah, CMOs, that would be great. We'd like to see more digital transformation. Yep. Matthew Lodge, thanks so much for giving us the update on the foundation, and of course, we've worked, appreciate it. Okay, it's Cube here in Seattle. I'm John Furrier, Cube on the ground. Thanks for watching. Ah!